My name is Chris Kinane. I'm a research director for supply chain management at ARC Advisory Group. Now, for those of you that are not familiar with ARC, we're, we're an industry analyst firm that covers technologies and technology markets. So, you know, the services include market research, supplier and selection consulting, uh, ROI and best practices research, and then related consulting around all these topics. We've conducted you know, really an extensive amount of research from both best practice and user surveys, as well as market studies that all relate to perfect delivery. Uh, you know, perfect delivery is not about a singular supply chain technology. It's really about the end to end supply chain. And this is what really guides our research. So over the last, you know, 10 plus years, we've released an annual omnichannel fulfillment survey that looks at the business drivers behind omnichannel initiatives, also looks at the processes and the technologies that support these initiatives, and then the results that companies are seeing. So we've also conducted a wide variety of ROI and best practices surveys you know, on transportation management, warehouse management, um, and these surveys really support our global market studies and also drive a lot of the writing that we do on logistics viewpoints. And throughout all of this research, the topic of perfect order delivery has really been front and center for us. When it comes to perfect delivery, I would say there's three main pressures that companies are really facing today. Uh, the first is creating a unified buying experience across channels. Now customers, they don't necessarily want a similar experience across channels. They realize that each channel has its own interaction point and it's really designed to deliver a different experience. However, the customer needs to be able to find the product that they want in the appropriate channel. So this is where that, you know, that unified buying experience comes into play. Uh, the second pressure I would say is the ability to capture orders easily. Now with a wide variety of selling channels available and different flow paths for different business models, companies need to be able to easily and accurately capture all the order information. The third pressure is you know, really to deliver orders rapidly. Customer expectations for expedited delivery are becoming more commonplace. And this is in both the B2B and the B2C world. And we're seeing that the lines between B2B and B2C are, are really starting to blur and the model's expanding a bit into a, a B2B2C focus. So with all, within all of this, order fulfillment process has become you know, much more complex. And as a result, this is putting you know, a, a, a lot of additional strain on fulfillment operations. When it comes to measuring customer loyalty, I would say the net promoter score survey is typically a best practice. So the net promoter score is really, it's correlated with revenue growth and calculated based on a response to one single simple question. How likely are you to recommend this company or product or service to a colleague or a friend? Now, when a company's net promoter scale score falls, usually the company begins a process of discovering why the score has fallen and then they really try to fix the problem from within. The perfect order metric includes four elements, order completeness, timeliness, condition, and documentation. So this means the order is delivered on time, in full, it's not damaged, and it has the appropriate invoice. So as supply chain complexities increase, perfect deliveries really become more difficult Improving on this metric will always involve a focus on people and processes, but it also often includes implementing new and I'd say more robust supply chain applications. The wrong metrics drive suboptimal behavior and metrics can often be manipulated. It's also not uncommon for logistics to be blamed for late deliveries since it's at the end of the process. However, as companies really look into the end-to-end -end order fulfillment process and break down and measure it, it's frequently found that logistics is actually not performing that badly. Omnichannel continues to be you know, really one of the hottest supply chain topics out there. And with the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, it's really amplified the importance of omnichannel operations as consumers have turned more to the web for brand interactions and shopping experiences. Now, the most common omnichannel flow path is probably order online and pick up in store. And you know, as I mentioned, with the, the COVID-19 pandemic really amplifying e-commerce, a lot of retailers have really turned to curbside pickup during the pandemic. So this process has become more important. Other omnichannel flow paths include order in store, ship to home, buy online, return in store, or ship from the warehouse to a store for pickup. And retailers have learned that they really need to have just one pool of inventory available to serve all channels and that they need sophisticated order orchestration capabilities to really make this happen. Well, I think retail customers, you know, they really 
don't care about how the front and back end technologies and, and business processes are integrated across channels. They simply want to interact with the brand through their channel of choice, or in a lot of cases, through a variety of channels. They want to find the product they want. They want to have the order fulfilled when and how is convenient for them. And they want to be able to return the item if necessary in a quick and easy manner. And I think the COVID-19 pandemic has really put an emphasis on the the need for retailers to be in the channel that, that the customer wants. So we've seen a huge uptick in e-commerce sales and there's been so much more when it comes to last mile deliveries from retailers that you know, I think that's sort of one of the, the, the key drivers for e-commerce and you know, omni-channel operations moving forward. One of the most important technologies for omni-channel is distributed order management. Distributed order management allows an organization to capture all information in the order management process across all relevant channels. So this includes the entry of the order, sourcing, payments, and fulfillment. And it also spans across all channels of sales operations. Now, the real benefit is that it doesn't matter where an order originates. All fulfillment channels have access to the information and the retailer can appropriately allocate the inventory depending on stock levels, demand requirements, and timing of fulfillment. For B2B companies, you know, they're looking to change their order to fulfill value chain. And their strategy is really built on three pillars. So the first is to connect demand to supply in real time. The second is to ensure the right product in the right place at the right location. And the third is to deliver on time. Now getting these strategies in place is incredibly difficult to achieve. When a consumer needs an item, they often go to a retailer who in turn depends on a number of different suppliers to keep items in stock. Now for each item, there's also a number of SKUs that they have. So this SKU pro proliferation makes it nearly impossible for retailers to have all the products they need on hand. So technology is really the key enabler for all three of these pillars. When it comes to the order to fulfillment value chain, I'd say there's really four critical applications that companies need. Order management orchestration, warehouse management, transportation management, and global trade management. Order management orchestration is not a singular technology addressing a singular problem. Instead, it's a combination of solutions that allows an organization to fulfill orders received from multiple systems through a variety of channels. A warehouse management system's primary mission is to manage a warehouse's resources, including inventory, space, labor, equipment, tasks, material flows, so it, it's essentially the backbone of moving goods from point A to point B. A transportation management system helps companies move freight from origin to destination efficiently, reliably, and cost-effectively. And there's two types of solutions that go into transportation management. The first is planning and execution, where that's focused on freight moves involving a carrier. And the second is fleet management, which involves freight moves with transportation assets, which are owned by the company. And the final piece is global trade management. And global trade management optimizes and streamlines business processes related to cross-border trade. So the modules include restricted party screening, trade compliance, uh, customs management, global trade intelligence, and estimated landing costs. Many companies depend on freight forwarders or custom brokers to classify their goods and file all the correct forms. However, as often does happen, you know, errors are made and the seller of the goods is then typically designated ex as the exporter of goods and the party that's responsible for paying any fines. Uh, similarly, when importing, compliance responsibility typically falls on the purchaser of the imported goods. So companies who have, you know, in-source trade compliance often find they can respond with greater agility to unexpected disruptions. So regulations are, are ever changing and companies have to figure out, you know, how do we stay on top of, of all these changes and the architecture of these solutions really matters. Um, and, you know, I'd say staying on top of the ever changing regulations is really aided by cloud solutions. So among the advantages of cloud solutions is, you know, there are frequent updates that ensures users have access to the current trade data and capabilities. Uh, this contrasts, you know, really to legacy on-premise systems where companies had to continuously apply new patches as regulations change. So cloud solutions, you know, they tend to be implemented more quickly and upgraded more easily, and they really help companies stay on top of those changing regulations. Cloud applications are really growing by leaps and bounds across the majority of supply chain applications. 
Uh, and with a cloud application, you know, there's no longer a need to run manual updates as continuous innovation is pushed from the cloud provider in a periodic release cycle. So this basically allows customers to turn on new features and functions as they see necessary without having to spend time, you know, changing legacy code for minor improvements. And companies have the choice between a public or private cloud. And we're really seeing a lot more companies are, are looking at public cloud offerings. So public cloud solutions are designed to be configured, not customized. And most public cloud uh, customers buy these solutions because they understand how costly customizations can be in terms of delaying their payback and making operational flexibility much more difficult to achieve. Driving perfect deliveries for global supply chains requires more than trade compliance solutions. Fulfillment applications that reside on a common platform can provide better end-to-end -end visibility, scenario planning, and responsiveness to disruptions, which are, which are clearly bound to happen. So as we've heard from you know, the customer speakers and all the, the great panels here at this event, there's a lot going on uh, right now in the world. And from an analyst perspective, you know, achieving the perfect order, you know, as, as we've seen, is really no easy task. It really comes down to a combination of the proper people, the processes, and the technologies that really need to be integrated and applied in a practical uh, way. So I, I think there's a number of technology trends that we're seeing. There's definitely the move towards the cloud, which is helping to streamline a lot of these processes. And we're seeing a lot of interest really around, you know, that the order fulfillment aspect of the supply chain is, it's really beyond just a single technology. So it's that end-to-end -end look at the supply chain. And I think the, the biggest thing that companies can do now is to really do their due diligence on what their customers need, and where their customers will be going in the next five to 10 years.